We're at an all-time high on the U.S. government debt. We're at an all-time high on women in employment. We're at an all-time high on political polarization, and it's all affecting the markets. We'll get into that right now. Welcome to The Trending Report, brought to you by USA Financial. The Trending Report is a bi-weekly show that aims to focus on the trend lines rather than the headlines. Each episode features commentary around the state of the market, as well as other factors that may impact your personal finances. The host of The Trending Report is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. The Trending Report is educational and not intended as personal financial advice. Welcome once again to the Trend Report. Today we are going to be reviewing data as it ended last Friday. That was July 7th, 2023, uh, just following the 4th of July. And I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July uh, celebrating the country and celebrating with your family. Uh, with that being said, we know that the government and politics affects the market. So we are going to talk today about some items that have been in the press, uh, some things that are going on uh, that are definitely uh, having an impact on all of us uh, in many different ways, including as they relate to the stock market. We're also going to then talk about how, all, how excuse me, how all of our stats and our calculations on the trends and the swings are affecting what's taking place in the capital markets, uh, from, from capitalization, meaning from large caps down to small caps, and also in the sectors, uh, the 11 different sectors that make up the stock market, make up the S&P 500 most specifically. And then also we'll take a look at some international equities as well as the bond market. So let's jump right in. Uh, first, as you probably recall, last month in June, uh, President Biden signed legislation kind of putting the debt ceiling debate to end, at least for now. Uh, the U.S. national debt was at $31.5 trillion uh, when that was signed. And then a month later, it was basically at $32.5 trillion. Uh, and as of uh, the most recent update that I could find online, uh, 32.475 is the exact number. So it went up by $1 trillion in uh, approximately a month, 33 days. Um, so to put that in perspective, and this is not a fair analysis or a fair reference, but I find it kind of interesting. Uh, it took us previously, it took us 205 years to build up a $1 trillion worth of national debt. And here we've done that now in basically the last month. Now, if you're interested in national debt, if you're interested in understanding more about that, I did do a trend report on that back in May. May 19th was the source data uh, for that particular discussion. And you can uh, obviously go back and check that out where we'll take a deeper dive into that. But what a lot of people don't realize is that you're looking at almost $100,000 of debt per U.S. citizen uh, here in the U.S. in terms of uh, what that debt would represent if you simply divided it by the headcount of the population of the United States. So national debt is obviously an issue. Uh, it, it was kind of put to bed, so we didn't see it impact the stock market in a huge way. Uh, but when it comes right up to that deadline or uh, if we go past that deadline and the government has to start going through various lockdown procedures, obviously that can have a huge impact on the stock market. So it is something that we have to pay attention to periodically. And again, last month uh, was the most recent time. So uh, very interesting in terms of the volume of debt. Uh, and you'll also want to go back and take a look at that trend report from May 19th that I mentioned. Um, that uh, also talks about how you really want to look at debt compared to GDP and the percentage that it relates uh, or, or, or uh, represents. Uh, so percentage of GDP, and is it uh, running higher than the overall percentage of GDP? Uh, or lower is, is one of the starting points to look at. Now, in terms of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates and the fact that they're trying to cool off the stock market, cool off the economy um, to bring, <clears throat> excuse me, to bring inflation back in check, one of the things that they want to see is they want to see unemployment actually go up. Uh, and it's not doing that because the economy is pretty resilient. And it, it, although it's been very volatile, it is chugging along. Uh, and we are sticking within this 3.4 to 3.7 um, 
interest, or excuse me, percentage of uh, of unemployment. And the unemployment rate, when it gets below 4%, oftentimes you'll hear economists say uh, that, uh, that that is essentially full employment. Because the theory is that approximately 4% of the people out there simply don't want to work. Uh, and no matter what you're going to do, you're not going to get it much below 4%. So uh, we are back to that number. Now, obviously, uh, when the pandemic first hit and the lockdown started to take place, uh, we saw it skyrocket up to about 15%. But it has been coming right back down, as you can see here, to below 4%. And it was below 4% for quite a period of time prior to that. The other thing that has been in question as of late is uh, women uh, in the workforce and would they be coming back after the pandemic? And actually, uh, interestingly, some stats just came out that says that uh, women uh, are at the highest employment rate that they have ever been, historically speaking. So almost 78% of uh Ages 25 to 54 year old women who could be in the workforce are in fact in the workforce uh, and um, and employed. So what that means is a couple of things. Number one, it kind of supports the idea that the Federal Reserve is probably going to continue to raise interest rates, which we alluded to in our last discussion that we believe that's probably what's going to happen. And because the uh, the unemployment rate is not going up. The market, the the employment market is remaining tight. Uh, that essentially gives a green light to the Federal Reserve to continue to raise interest rates. So most likely, we are going to see some more rate increases uh, coming down at future Federal Reserve meetings. Now. We also know the government has a lot to do with this. And I'm not going to take this into a political discussion uh, beyond the point of pointing out, statistically speaking, what fuels a lot of the noise. So a lot of people talk about how things are just so loud, whether it's someone calling for uh, a huge correction in the market or someone uh, equally loud saying that, no, the market is going to withstand this and we're not going to see a huge correction. And then right on down through gloom and doom versus uh, versus sunshine. Uh, and we see it politically with the leanings of left versus right and so on. <clears throat> and all of that gets magnified by the fact that social media and 24-7 news cycles uh, really just need to constantly have content. They live on that content. And so the more that gets poured into the system, the louder the noise and the static becomes. And it seems like the more polarization that uh, takes place. And so I, I tried to find some stats that just support to kind of give you an idea of what happens in this sequence. And this was uh, this isn't the newest statistic. Uh, this is uh, updated here in 2015, although this article is uh, from 2022 over here. Uh, <clears throat> but what they did is they went back and compared 1994 to 2015, and they're looking at uh, Democrats' uh, leanings and Republican leanings. And what's really important about this is if you look right here in 1994, right in the center here, maybe you can see my highlights here, right in the center, uh, you had approximately half of the population, 53% of the Democrats, 44% of the Republicans, fell into that mixed section, that middle zone, uh, if you will, uh, where they were a moderate uh, in terms of their thinking. And if you look over here to the far right, you only had 13% of Republicans. So that's this right here uh, coming in. Uh, well, it's this whole swath, I should say, but coming in down here low is a kind of a way to look at it. And then over here, you only had 5% of Democrats that were consistently leaning liberal. And, and over here on the far right is consist consistently leaning conservative. But now if we jump down to 2015, look at how this is flattening out right here. It's all, all of it's pushing out to the edges. So now all of a sudden we've got 22% of the Republicans over here instead of 13. We've got 27% of the Democrats over here instead of just 5%. Uh, back in 1994. And now we've only got about a third of the population coming into this center uh, swath, what they call mixed, or what oftentimes you'll hear, uh, hear referenced as moderate. Now, the point isn't which side of that do you want to be on. The point is the farther out you see large volumes of people on these edges, 
the noisier everything gets. Because as this article is, uh, kind of alludes to, uh, the ends of the, of the spectrum are always the most active, the most noisy. And that, you can argue, uh, goes well beyond politics. That is the same thing with news. Uh, that is the same thing with opinions. And obviously, politics brings a lot of opinions. So we're hearing a lot of things about where the stock market's going to go. There is a tremendous amount of volatility. Uh, you've got the gloom and doom camp. You've got the sunshine and teddy bear camp. Uh, we don't know where it's going to go. But I will tell you that the market and the economy does tend to be resilient. It wants to go up. Its normal direction is to go up. Now, it'll never be a straight line. Uh, growth always comes in a crooked line, um, but it wants to go that way. So pushing it down sometimes is actually harder than lifting it up. Uh, and that's what bit what you're seeing back on this previous page here, where the Fed is trying to raise interest rates to slow the market down. And yet the market's saying, no, we need workers. We have work to be done. We want to employ people. And they're not really getting to slow that down yet. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at what's going on in the markets based on all this. But here we're looking at capitalization. We're going from large cap down to small cap. And the first thing you notice is just about all green over here. Now, that's the trend versus the swing. So the trend is the longer term view, the longer, term, longer view trend of what's going on. The swing is more the shorter viewpoint of what's going on. The overall stock market is represented here by this blue bar in the center. And then we see the graphics over here on the right. But both the trend and the swing are coming in bullish. You can just kind of see how the market is swinging up this direction. So we are seeing uh, bullish both on the swing and on the trend taking place here. Uh, for the most part, we've got large caps that are really winning the day. They're kind of leading the charge. The S&P 100, the 100 largest stocks within the S&P 500. Obviously, the 500 itself is a, is a large cap uh, um, index with the growth, the index uh, itself, and the value all coming in. Uh, in a row here. So the large caps winning the day. And then as you can see right here, the S&P 600 is the small caps and the 400 are the mid caps. Uh, so they're all really stacked right in a perfect order from large cap down to small cap in terms of where the momentum in the market is coming from. Mm, excuse me. Now sectors, we take a little different view here. We take the 11 sectors, we want to look at them on an equal weighted basis. That's this blue bar here uh, indicating that. And then we want to see which sectors are, are kind of lifting up the market, which sectors are dragging it down. We've got consumer discretionary. We've got information tech, telecom and industrials at the top end. And then the rest down here at the bottom kind of pulling the market down. Utilities, healthcare, and energy uh, at the very base. So we're still seeing that upward curve like we saw a moment ago. We're still seeing... Uh, bullish on both the swing and the trend, uh, which is uh, what we would expect. Normally, this will be pretty much in line with capitalization, but then it's just the subsets of the market uh, rather than is it the large companies or the small companies winning the day. It's which type of businesses or industries are winning the day. Now, if we go international, we're getting a very different view. International, if you take a look, the first thing that jumps off the page is that the short term swing is all bearish across the board everywhere, even though the long term trend is still showing uh, or at least hanging on to its bullish status. So the overall international market is here. We're still seeing kind of an overall trend uh, coming up from the last six to eight months or so, if you will. So that's this coming down here. We bring this green right down here. And then here's the swing. But as you can see, we're taking a, a southern turn. We're going bearish here on the swing as of late uh, with the international. And most importantly, it's this, this column here that really strikes me. Uh, the fact that all of those various non-US equities are taking a bearish tilt on the swing. And then finally, in the bond market, we're seeing bear all the way across. Everything is just red. The whole board is lit up red. The overall mo uh, bond market is red on its trend and on its swing. Um, 
you can see uh, here's this is the 200 day average, this red line coming down like this. We've got kind of a flattening taking place here, but we're still looking at uh, red on both the swing and the trend, uh, tilting towards that bearish uh, angle on the uh, on the uh, bonds. Now within that, we are also, I would just point out, seeing that really it's the government bonds that are dragging things down. And you, you can't really say it's lifting it up when you're seeing all red, but above the average, you're seeing more of the corporate bonds uh, above the average, and you're seeing the government bonds currently below the average. So we'll be watching this very closely as we go through the month of July. Uh, there will be uh, an interesting summer ahead. I hope you're enjoying this time uh, and you're able to spend some time with your family this summer. And we're able to see the Fed Reserve actually stop raising interest rates in the near future and let the market kind of take off once again if all goes well. Thank you, everyone. We'll be back again soon. Thanks again for listening to this episode of The Trending Report, powered by USA Financial. We invite you to visit usafinancial.com to find out more about our work with independent advisors and their clients all around the country. Any projections, targets, or estimates in this report are forward-looking statements and are based on the firm's research, analysis, and assumptions. Due to the rapidly changing market conditions and the complexity of investment decisions, supplemental information and other sources may be required to make informed investment decisions. All expressions of opinions are subject to change without notice. Clients should seek financial advice regarding the appropriateness of investing in any security or investment strategy discussed.